At the time that this video is being released, students around the world have had to switch from traditional in-classroom learning systems to online learning using new technologies. And while pandemic is certainly an extenuating circumstance, it does reflect an existing trend of the increasing use of technology in the educational system. How does AI fit into that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. You might not know it, but AI has begun to permeate our educational system more than you might think. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and I'm fascinated by how AI algorithms and new technology impact us both as individuals and also as a society. And if you're also interested in that, you should subscribe to my channel to learn more. You've probably already encountered AI in your educational journey. After all, there are some tasks that clearly could be automated. One of the best examples of this is grading. In some cases, I wouldn't even call this AI. Assignments with a clear rubric don't always need an actual person to score them, especially if the answers to the assignment are pretty all or nothing. Take multiple choice exams. The SAT is scored by running your Scantron form through a machine that identifies which dots you've filled in and scores you based on that. Similarly, plagiarism checkers like Turnitin cross-reference your writing against existing writing on the internet, and if it finds a match, then it highlights it as plagiarism. However, AI can still be useful in grading that requires a bit more nuance. The program that I'm most familiar with for this application is Gradescope, although there's many others. These programs typically use natural language processing, which we've discussed in another AI 101 video, to identify grammatical issues, sentence structure problems, and generally make sure that written assignments are on topic and make sense. I could do a whole video on how an algorithm can be trained to grade an essay, but in short, these algorithms are trained with large amounts of written data that are labeled with anything from the parts of speech in a sentence to what the topic of the assignment is on. They can then use the information that they've learned from those labeled texts to analyze our essay. Programs like Gradescope can also group written responses with certain attributes so that you can make sure to grade them the same way, which I think is particularly cool because no one likes inconsistent grading. Personally, I used Gradescope when I was taking an algorithms class at Cornell, and I'm actually not sure whether they use the AI features of Gradescope. If you're not familiar with algorithms classes, they tend to be very proof-based math classes. And while Gradescope can definitely analyze your writing, I'd highly doubt it's been trained to grade math proofs specifically. Now, this all begs the question of whether these grading systems are always accurate, and the answer, of course, is probably not. However, one could argue that human grading isn't always accurate either, so a system that uses both an automated initial review as well as a manual human review might save time for teachers and improve consistency of grading. Another place where we're seeing AI being used is in personalized education. As most of us probably know from experience, just because you're in the same classroom as another person doesn't mean that you learn the same way as another person. In fact, every student's optimal learning style is probably at least a little bit different from every other student's. Generally speaking, the goal of AI-assisted curriculum development is to identify places where students are struggling in their traditional coursework and either offer them alternate courses that fulfill the same requirements or offer them alternate learning strategies that might help them pick up the material faster. Now, while I'm sure this is being used in the US, especially for children who are homeschooled, I wasn't able to find any examples of it being used here. However, it is being used in China extensively. I'll include a bunch of different examples in the description box, but I'd start with this article from the MIT Tech Review, which explains how China is incorporating AI into its educational system. At face value, a personalized curriculum seems like it would help a lot of students who struggle with traditional education to succeed. However, these systems aren't generally set up to carry through multiple years of education, so at some point students will have to reintegrate into the traditional classroom setting that they originally struggled with. Additionally, this may put some additional stress on teachers. After all, if everyone is learning on a different personalized curriculum, the teacher still has to manage all of the students in their class. Finally, and like all of the other AI systems that we talk about on this channel, this recommendation system has the chance to be biased and might either steer students away or towards topics based on the information that it's using to determine what courses or learning strategies would best suit that student. Lastly, there's been a lot of interest in using AI to track students' educational journeys from kindergarten to college. A lot of school districts already do this, just not with AI. Mine called it tracking, and the essential goal was to outline the courses that students would take for years to come based on what they're taking right now. For example, I wanted to take Algebra II High Honors as a freshman in high school, but to do that I had to take Geometry as an 8th grader, and to do that I had to take certain math classes going back to 6th grade. In other words, the math class that I chose to take as a sixth grader was what allowed me to take multivariable calculus as a senior in high school. 
Now, the problem with this system is that you're kind of locked in. For example, if you struggled with math or just didn't really like it when you were younger, and then you change your mind when you're older, it's actually very difficult to jump to a higher course level. In theory, one of the benefits of an AI version of this is that it offers you a little bit more flexibility. These systems track your requirements to make sure that you're still on track, identify students who are overperforming or underperforming based on several different metrics, and recommend classes based on that. In fact, some colleges are actually using this type of AI software to track their students, going so far to track class attendance and whether you went to the library as a metric of performance. Which would have meant that pretty much everyone in my engineering courses, including me, would have underperformed. Oops. As with all the other systems that we've talked about today, I think that there's definitely a lot of positive potential for systems like this to identify students who are struggling academically before they get to the point of failing a class or worse, dropping out. However, I also think it needs to be taken with a grain of salt and some human review. After all, metrics like class attendance and whether or not you went to the library are, in my opinion and based on my experience, not great predictors of academic success. But what about future uses of AI in schools? Well, one active area of research is in tools that help students refocus using different biological signals. A particular device that is close to my heart in that it was developed in the lab that's one floor up from mine in the media lab is AttentiveView. Their goal was to monitor the brain signals of the user to determine when you're not paying attention and then deliver some haptic feedback to help you refocus. Understandably, this has gotten some mixed reviews, including some conspiracy theories. Helping students refocus is probably good to a point, but it's probably better to treat the underlying problem that's making it so hard for a student to focus in the first place. Now, this has not been used in any schools as far as I'm aware, so you don't have to worry about getting lightly slapped in the face when you stop paying attention in algebra class. So, AI in schools, what do we think? Personally, as someone who is still a student, I'm actually surprised that I haven't encountered many of these systems during my education. Aside from Gradescope, as far as I know, Cornell, MIT, and my high school didn't use any sort of AI system to improve our education or track our performance. However, AI is increasingly being integrated into the educational system. In fact, some of you have talked about your experiences in the comments. I definitely don't think that this is a universally bad idea. After all, teachers do so much for their students and don't get paid nearly enough for it. So a new technology that allows them to delegate tasks and focus more on providing high quality education without any negative impact seems like it would be a good thing. The challenge, as we know, is anticipating and avoiding the negative impacts. AI has biases and we wouldn't want to implement systems that already reinforce certain stereotypes associated with gender and race in the educational system. And I haven't seen any evidence of this happening so far, but these systems also haven't been formally audited, so it's kind of hard to know. Have you interacted with AI during your educational journey? Let me know in the comments, because I'd be really curious to hear about your experiences. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my wonderful patrons. Otherwise, you can find me via my human name on the social medias, and I will see you guys next Friday.